Sonya coming on live for a project and I told you if you got the alert it was a big project today take a look at this sucker right here it's about to be beauty it is a china cabinet okay it had glass right here in the front of it, it was looking outdated you know what I'm talking about the old style china cabinets right and I took the glass out of it the glass is not gonna go back into it I'm gonna make use of it just like this and uh, I'm gonna paint it today real quick and uh, I'm gonna use it for a store display right so here is a tip that I always tell you guys if you have a smaller space and you want it to look bigger and open so say for example you know you just got smaller rooms in your house and you want to create you know openness and space you know if you can find pieces of furniture uh, or even like decor or anything that hangs like you know up and down versus across okay it's like when us ladies hey ladies it's like when us ladies wear, wear dresses right and if the stripes go across it makes us look wider and if they go up and down we look leaner and taller and higher right so at any time you're trying to create heights in your place go for something that is taller versus wider and number two tip if you have a space challenge space and you're trying to put pieces into it is go with a light color okay so when you're thinking about you have a big open space in your uh, in your house and you need to fill it with furniture that's when you go to the dark colors okay even like that classic black dress the black velvet that's gonna be meteor chunky take up space whereas when you go with light colors like today these were the two colors I picked from okay our vintage white and our antique lace okay you guys tell me again and again how much you love these and so my decision today is like this this is how quick how do you get things done Sonia I go hmm which color should I pick I definitely know I want to go light because I want to I don't want to feel like this thing takes up the entire space here in my shop my options are the vintage white or the antique lace and then this is as simple as this my friend friends which one do I have more of in my can, okay? And I have more of the antique lace of this beauty today. This browny, frowny beauty is about to be see all her full, full glory, and we'll put the vintage white aside for later, okay? So how fun was that, right? Hey, Vaughn, how are you, Nicole? Antique lace in the house, heck yeah, right? So I, so this is Sonya here, by the way, for all of you new people who have joined my page this week. I'm Sonya Miller with Junk Monkey Paint Company. I love to give new life, love to give new life to old things. This thing here, yeah, it's older, right? I mean, it's brownie frowny. And uh, let me bring you in close so you can take a quick up close view of it, okay, before I bring you back. Listen, it's like parts of it is wood and parts of it like down here where my hand is and these here, it's like this like plastic wood, okay? It doesn't even have any wood grain, but that's okay. When I approach projects like this, I definitely wanna go with the chalky style paint. It's the stuff that has muscles, it's gonna stick right on. Yes, you could use the milk paint, but just make sure you add your extra bond. Otherwise, you would probably get a lot of chippiness that's happening, right? So this piece needs some love, all right? So here we go. I got this piece for all of somewhere around, I feel like I paid like $12 for it, 12 or $15 for it. That's in my wheelhouse. I am a junker. So when I find pieces that are like right around that that amount, that's like heck yeah. Load it up. That sucker is mine, right? Heck yeah, Marsha. Big old thumbs up. Hello, Nancy Wheeler from Newfoundland. What part of home are you from? Watching from today. So this is what I'm gonna do today, okay? I'll pull you back a little bit so you can see the full view of it. But this is what's gonna go down today. I this is what I do when you say again, how do you get stuff done, Sonia? I speed paint, okay? So yes, I'm talking to you guys right now, but in a world where I wanna get stuff done, like today, yes, I am coming home to Newfoundland this summer, Yvonne, cousin Yvonne. Um, so when I wanna get things done, you know what I do? I knock it out. Speed paint is what I call when you get lots of practice, when you get to, when you get to be like junk monkey pro, okay? As a professional, meaning that, you paint it so much junk, you could paint it with your eyes closed at this point, okay? And so today I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make this piece gorgeous. It's gonna be my store display and I'm gonna go ahead and get started, okay? And you guys can time me and tell me how fast I get it done because I'm just gonna whip through this, okay? I'm gonna pretend that you guys aren't there for a second, so don't be like, oh my gosh, why isn't she talking to us? Seriously, we're gonna get this done and then I'm gonna be able to stage it and get it all back in place because my shop opens again tomorrow. We are open to the public on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. 
The days in between is when we like, seriously, this, this place gets torn apart. We are packing, we are shipping, we are putting place, things in place like ninjas behind the scenes, uh, sending things out all over the country and even into Canada. And there's just a lot that goes on, right? So I've got to get my store put back together and I can't wait because who remembers that rummage sale that I was at a couple weeks ago and I got some stuff for really, really cheap. Like I said, this one, less than 20 bucks. I took the glass off. The glass ain't coming back on. So right now I have, if you could see in here, maybe about like a half a container, I would say. It might even be a little bit less than that, but we're gonna make it work, right? Oh, Tammy, I'm happy, Trisha. Get it done, girl. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead, turn around and start painting this sucker. You guys can watch and see how fast I get it done. I'm going for a shabby look. So my tools today are the antique lace, chalky style paint, uh, my shabby chip brush. These are on my website. If you guys wanna use the same paint brushes that I do, just at jumpmonkeypaint.com. By the way, Kate is behind the scenes here with me today. She's my partner in crime. So she will shout out any questions while I'm painting and keep the conversation going. How does that sound? Good? Send me some hearts, all right? Somebody set a timer. I can't wait. First splash of paint on a brownie frowny piece makes me happy. All right, three, two, one, go! All right, where should I start? Down here, I think I'm gonna start. All right, Kate, so you are in charge of the chat. You holler out to me, whatever it is. Anybody that has questions about today, I will paint to you, will paint with you while I get this project done, okay? What are the new colors of chalky chalk style? We are hoping to have them. We were hoping to have them actually by the end of this week. So maybe we'll get the call tomorrow. If not, it'll be, I would imagine, first thing next week. Yay, right? We have some awesome colors coming back. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to think. Even like the Mocha Madness. You guys have been asking about Mocha Madness. That's a good one. Very dance. Um, blue slate. There's like, there's like almost 10 of them coming back, okay? So they're all the popular ones that you guys know and love very well. All right, so I'm gonna do some long reaches here just to kind of like to be able to pull that all together right there. All right. Are you going to have pink? Pink? <laughs> Am I gonna have pink? Yes, in fact, I'm giving you guys a, uh, a secret here, okay? Let's just say there's new two, two new colors coming out and one of them one of them involves the pink family. So you're gonna love that. So make sure you stay tuned for that. So yes, yes, yes. See, I gave the secret away and all I had to do was say yes. This is me, right? Can't keep a secret, can't keep a secret. Well, you have a pearl color. A pearl color? Like, I'm thinking you're thinking like maybe metallic? Right now we do not do any metallics. We, our two specialty paint lines would be the chalky style paint and the milk paints. But the future is bright for Junk Monkey Paint Company, and we've got all kinds of funness planned for you guys. So stay tuned. Can I sell Junk Monkey Paint from my garage as a retailer? If you have a legitimate business, meaning that you are set up to be a business, we can do business together. Do you do any prep on furniture prior to painting? What I did before I turned this on was I grabbed my cred cutter, which is what's called the painter's friend. And it's a thing that you can, it's a style um, product that you can put on your furniture that doesn't leave like soapy, oil, any sort of residual, so that way it doesn't interfere with your paint job. And so I, I highly recommend cred cutter, spelt with a K. Angie said, I've gone behind on boot camp get caught up by going back and watching, right? You sure can. For those of you who are in my creative coaching boot camp, you guys have access, you can learn at your own pace, and um, you are able to have, um, basically, you get to keep all those, all the teachings that I've been uh, doing, with, doing with you weekly, three a week, forever, so you can watch it at your own pace. And uh, you get to keep those links to watch anytime you want. Sound good? Um, when are you selling in North Carolina? North Carolina. Let me think here. Let me think. Let me think. Do we have anybody in the works from North Carolina? We get applications in, uh, but not everybody follows through, right, and signs up. So I feel like I've seen an application come in from North Carolina, but I haven't seen an order placed yet, which means we need some retailers from North Carolina. So if you're asking, maybe you know somebody, do tell, do tell. Make sure you tag them, or maybe you could be that person. 
We sent out another retailer's um, order today. I have to catch up tomorrow and give shout outs and put all kinds of new retailers on our website. Um, but if you're interested in being a retailer for our paint, <clears throat> all you have to do is go to junkmonkeypaint.com and then click become a retailer. If you want to find one, hit the find a retailer and that's where we're adding everybody as we get them all set up and they are in place to be able to serve you. So Pretty cool, right? a bunch of questions on states are you going to be selling in? Are you going to be selling Everywhere. in Texas? Heck yeah. Arizona. Um, I haven't seen anybody, I don't think, send in an application. We're open to working with anybody all across the country, all different states. And so if anybody's interested, make sure you email us, right? Or not emails, but you fill out an application so we can go through that process. But yeah, actually my friend Clara Nicole, she's crafty too. We are making a trip to Texas uh, in July to go visit her and to drop her off her stash of paints. She's actually going to be um, a retailer over there in Texas for us, which is cool. Do you have a retailer in Eastern PA? We do. We have a couple over there, actually. We have, um, let me think if I can say them all. Judith, she is over in just outside of Philadelphia. We have Leola Market that just got opened out over there as well just this week. She's somebody I have to announce. She's in the Lancaster area. I'm trying to think, and I feel like there's one more I'm missing as well. So if you go to junkmonkeypaint.com, click find a retailer, that's where you'll see me add them all to. I'll throw them all. Yep, sounds um, good. Do you have paint classes in your I have not offered any paint classes since last summer. I did some um, paint your own furniture classes. We call them flip your furniture. And so when things slow down a little bit, I probably will offer some more classes. So stay tuned. Can you recommend a good wood glue? A good wood glue. Um, I tend to go with Gorilla Glue, but be careful because um, Gorilla Glue has some of the kinds that it offers expands. And so you never want to use a wood glue that's going to expand and you get all these like bubbles and everything else that come forward underneath your uh, project, right? So, but yeah, I love me some Gorilla Glue. Some what does it cost to get started as a retailer? Well, we have, what happens is when you send in your information, then we'll send you back the, the overview, the complete overview. We keep it very simple because that's how I like to operate my business. But to give you an idea, you would have for like milk paints, you would have to purchase 85 milk paints. Um, yeah, 85 milk paints, and then it's up to you whatever part of the collections that you get from there on. And we are now rolling out chalky style paint to everybody else as well as we get that all configured. But um, yeah, we make it very, very easy to be able to work with us because at the end of the day, we want to support small business. Um, so that's how, you know, our business was born. You guys know that it started in our garage and around our kitchen table. So I have a big love in my heart to help other small creatives who uh, want to get going in their business. So that's always, you know, something that, um, that we're always thinking about. So, but if, yeah, if you're interested, just fill out that quick application. That lets us know that you are a legitimate business to send the information to you and um, then from there you can decide if it's going to work for you. But it is first come, first serve in the different locations, right? Is the paint okay on that? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm using chalky style paint right now. I use this on, like I'm doing today, a combination of fake wood and real wood. And um, we also use it on metal, glass, all kinds of stuff. But if you're gonna put it outside, I would just suggest that you take the time to seal it because mother nature is a beast, right? So she's not gonna like rain and then wash your paint off, but over time, I mean, it will start to uh, fade your, your uh, work. So if you wanna help preserve it, just take the time to go ahead and put some poly onto it, whether it's a couple extra coats of the water base or you go and you get an oil base as well, whatever you want. If they want, but we're gonna we're gonna suggest that you do both because customers are gonna want both, right? 
So um, if we set you up a retailer and we send people to you, the idea is you carry a little bit. Um, we leave lots of space open for you guys to pick what you want to carry, but we want you to be able to carry a nice variety because when we're sending our customers to you, they're going to want to be able to pick, right? So that's why. That's how that comes together. But you get to pick your colors and all that good stuff. I'm getting ready to open a food space. Can someone with a food space become a retailer? Heck yeah, every day of the week. Does Just make sure you have your, your business license, right? Does this paint dry funky when it's rainy, be, being that there, that here in PA we are soon getting ready to free the yard, LOL. So what's she asking? She was just making a joke. Oh, oh I thought she said something that does it get funky? Yeah. But, um, Only if you paint it funky. I have an old wood fence that I would like to paint and bring to the life. Can okay. I use drunk monkey paint on it? You sure can. And then if it's outside, just do a seal on it to help protect it and keep it longer. You don't have to, but I suggest if you want to keep it, I mean, if you kind of just want to paint it white and you just want to let it kind of dilapidate over time, don't seal it because if you want it to look that like old white picket fence look. But if it's something that you're trying to preserve, then take it in in the winter time. You know, if you could put it under a covered porch or if it's something like a picket fence, then, you know, I would suggest that you seal it unless you want it to fade and just uh, weather over time with Mother Nature. Sound good? I'm so excited for this. I love it. What do you guys think so far? What do you think so far? So imagine this field with all kinds of junk monkey products. It's gonna be good. So who's got summer plans? Tell me, make me jealous. Tell me where you're going this summer. You're getting a lot of love this. Oh, I appreciate the love. Love makes the world go around, guys. Thank you so much. Anything this is a project for me, and it's a quick knockout project, right? I'm going shabby style. I don't think I'm going to put a second coat of paint on it. I want it to look um, distressed and old because at the end of the day, it's going to be a backdrop for my all kinds of pro you know products that I have here in the shop. So, that's why I'm going to keep the glass off the front of it and uh, go with that, right? What got you into painting? Always was a creative my entire life. Um, could not help but look at things like back in the day, even when I would spend time at my grandmother's house and she would have literally pieces of wool left over, like little small balls left over from bigger projects that she did. You know, and I would take them and I'd put googly eyes on them or, you know, ask her to teach me how to knit. You know, I was the person that loved to bead. I loved to mosaic. I loved to make earrings. Loved to paint my toenails. Loved to make anything, right? Loved all, all things pretty. Loved, loved drawing and coloring, all those things. And uh, I started painting furniture when I moved to the U.S. from Canada and I didn't have a whole lot of money and I wanted to make my house beautiful and I went to a Pennsylvania auction, bar, good old fashioned barn auction and saw that furniture was going for like a dollar, two dollars, four dollars, five dollars. And I'm like, what? Nobody wants to take that home just because it's that color? And I'm like, people, don't you know you can paint that? And so I started buying furniture for my house I decorated my house, I had no more space, and then I started just continuing to do it because I loved to do it, and I would paint pieces that I would find and offer them up on the local sales trades once for other people to enjoy. And uh, it just kept going from there because I would paint a piece and then somebody would say, oh my gosh, I wanna buy that. And I'd say, well, it's sold. And they'd say, okay, well, if I bring you, if I bring you, um, a piece that I have that's similar, would you do the same look for me on this nightstand? And then I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. Because when you're the creator and you're the artist and you're authentically doing it yourself, you can replicate it, right? So that's what I would do. So then I started custom painting for other people. And uh, 
you know, I got a booth from there and I would sell things from my booth and I love teal. I noticed that every time I painted in teal, everything would disappear from my booth. And uh, from there, it was like I couldn't keep my booth stopped and I decided to go ahead. Everybody kept saying, we wanna come, we wanna see your, we wanna see your space, your gallery, can I come see your shop? But I was working from my garage, right guys? So um, it wasn't that luxurious, trust me. And so what I decided to do was take a leap of faith and I thought, well, maybe if I get a space for the summer, just for like six months, we'll see. Because if everybody who loves my work says that they would support me, then I don't think I would have any problem because it's scary, right, when you open up a shop because you have twice the amount of bills that you have right now. So, um, and you know, you take that leap of faith. That's why I always say that if, when you walk past a business and you see that a business is open, you know what, it's pretty amazing because that business would not have existed unless somebody took a leap of faith to open it. And let me tell you, you lose sleep, right? Because you're like, if I open it, well, people come and when you open stores, I mean, who has money to build a, to buy a building outright? And so you're, you know, you're taking upon leases and things like that. And so you're hoping that people will come and support you. And uh, it was just an amazing show of support that I received and I was able to keep my store open. And remember, I started painting because I did not have a lot of money. And uh, so to be, to open a store when you're like broke, and, but yet you know that um, you have a talent for something and people love it and there just seems to be no end to um, your customer lineup. And I opened it and we never closed and we've been open ever since. Our business has really transitioned a lot from like back in the beginnings of the days. This is what I would do just like this with my music on except I would do it in my garage. And now, you know, fast forward to where we are today as part of that process and keeping my, my cost down and not being somebody who could afford expensive paint, um, this is how the Junk Monkey was born, right? So work with Matt, who, was, who um, was at the time a chef, and so he was just always good at making sauces and concocting things and bringing things together, and uh, we worked on paint recipes, and I would try it and be like, can you do this? Can you change this with it? And we kept working together until we made paint that I could paint with and uh, yeah right I made paint that I could paint with and uh, we just you know and then from there people would say well you know what paint are you using and I'd say no brand it's just our paint it's what we make and then uh, we started selling a few jars here and there and guys can you believe it like where the junk monkey is today right same people doing the same things with the same love um, but it's really cool because now I have all you guys to hang out with right Pam, I can paint a lot of pieces of furniture in one day. Um, so for me, it's not like I, I have to turn myself off to the point of telling myself that, okay, I'll start that tomorrow. I shouldn't start that now because I think when you love what you do, you can't help it. It's like you just keep going. And, uh, but yeah, I could paint many pieces of furniture in a day, right? You guys know, you probably followed me when I knocked out um, over 70 sets of cabinets doing one set a week back to back to back to back to back, right? So painting um, is a lot of fun. I think it's therapeutic and um, it just makes things beautiful, right? I'm done, guys. I'm done. Like, I'm just going to let that settle. You can see it's kind of still a little bit wet. I like that um, shabby look with it. That's what I was going for. If I wanted all over coverage, I would do a second coat or else I would roll it on with a mini roller. But now I think we're good. I think I might put a little bit of decorations down at the bottom down here. Let me make sure. There's always a part I miss, so I'm looking for that part, Matt, even though you're not with me today. Matt lives on, even though when he's not here. What did you not like about other paints that made you make your own? Well, number one, I think the first thing was, hang on one second. I think that while I'm trying to talk, while I'm behind, hiding behind here, I think the first thing was, and I'm going to be honest with you, I went to buy paint. I was so broke I couldn't afford the can of paint. It was so expensive. I left empty-handed. I left, left empty-handed because I could not afford and I could not wrap my brain around the fact that the little money that I did have and I was trying to make more extra money for my family by painting furniture for other people, that the cost was absolutely outrageous and I left empty-handed because I wanted to eat food that week, right? And then from there, 
when I made my own paint, I wanted, to, wanted it to be thicker. I wanted it to be when I, let's say for example, there was black Sharpie on a dresser, there was nail polish on a dresser, I could put it on and the coat would be thick enough where it would like basically drown that out, which is really nice. I wanted it to go to a super flat, flat matte look to imitate old furniture. Um, and you know, there was a couple other things that I wanted to like, wanted it to behave like, and I think we got it. I love it. I love it. So there you go, right? So yeah, because to go back to that point, you can have beautiful quality paint on an amazing price point. You don't have to overcharge people for it because at the end of the day, I don't know about you, my friends, but my mission in life is to take old pieces and make them beautiful again. So if I'm finding a piece on the side of the road or somebody's donating a piece to me, I wanna be able to sleep well at night knowing that I'm able to buy lots of colors of paint that I love that goes a really, really long way and I'm not breaking the bank, right? Linda, we are in love with you too. Hey, Diana. All right, let's take a quick look. So I'm gonna like dry this in just a little bit. But yeah, here's where we are right now. So I basically put a whole shabby, you guys see that? Put a whole um, coat of paint on here. It needs some distressing now too, doesn't it guys? It needs some distressing. And I think it's gonna need like a little bit of detail as well down here. I think I'm gonna put something down here as well. I think, yes, Nicole, it is. I, yeah, yeah, I, listen, you know, here's the thing, even when we made our, hand, our paints handmade, that we could have charged a whole lot more for it, but part of our mission is to build a community of, of like-minded people that, you know, you get it, you enjoy what you do, right? And uh, you don't wanna to have to hide your paint or wonder if you can afford the paint. Ah, uh, like that just gets my goat. I'm on a goat theme this week. All right, so I'm just gonna put some heat in here with my heat gun. Notice how it's starting to get dark. My goodness gracious. Let me, um... Dry this up a little bit. All right, let's put some detail on the bottom. But yeah, we didn't start out a paint company, right? Let me turn this light on here, see if that helps. But yeah, we did not start out a paint company. It was truly born out of love. And I know that, you know, a lot of times people come out of the gate as companies and they say, I want to be a paint manufacturer. Maybe they never painted in their life. Maybe they're not an avid painter. That's not somebody you see regularly paint. And uh, it's funny because now that we're kind of like going backwards with the process, meaning that our paint was born first and then we work with a manufacturer, right? A lot of times companies come out of the gate, they just want to make money and that's their biggest uh, goal. And so therefore they take a paint that is not even made by them or they don't even test it themselves. They have other people that test it for them. And I'm just like, we're authentic, man. We're all about good paint made with love. That's special, right? Yes, it is so hot in the shop. Well, I had the AC on today and uh, I just turned it off because I did not want you guys to have to listen to it because you know how it gets like really loud, right? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we definitely realized, well, we always knew our paint was special because we didn't make it to be like anybody else's. We made our own version of the paint. But when we got to the point where we started working with um, a manufacturer now for our paint line, being able to keep the same process and the same paint that we've always had, um, and there be they being somebody that you know would work with other paint lines, they're like, you do what with your paint? Like our paint was very different. They'd never seen the way we made paint before. And so um, that actually made me feel good because I don't wanna be like anybody else. I don't know about you, but I wanna be my own Blaze my own path and be my own way, right? You know how I feel in business you should be. Just listen to your people. They will lead you where you need to go. Gaylene asked if you brought how many baby goats from the other Oh, man. Gaylene. I talked about baby goats for the last two days. Yes. I, I talked myself out of it when I found out. Because I asked the question, how long do baby goats um, live for? Like, how long is the lifespan of a goat? It's 20 years, so I'm like, oh man, where will I be in the next 20 years? Oh, that was a rough one, you know? So I'm gonna put a stencil on here, guys. It's black. It is black velvet. 
It's a true black. It's the only black that we offer because it's the perfect true black. I'm going to use a new shabby chip brush. And now I'm just kind of like dancing it around because I want this piece, right, to look like really uber distressed and old. And it's going to be beautiful when I get all my colors and stuff on it. I'll take a picture once I get it all filled and I get it in place. But remember, this is the backdrop for, um, it's going to be filled with other things. So, to keep with that, ooh, do you like that? Can you guys see that from back there? I like that. All right, let me do the other one. So, this is a stencil that I've had for a long time. Where did I get this one? I think I got this one on Amazon. I'll link it when I get off of here. You can see how many times I've used it. It has all kinds of colors of paint onto it. Ask me if I wash my stencils. Go for it. I dare you. Because I'm not. Because I'm not. I'm not hoity-toity. And uh, I'm a little maintenance girl. Nobody got time for washing stencils. I tried it. Did not like it at all. Bought a t-shirt. Gave it back. All right. Let's see here. So it was about an inch down from over there. So I'm going to take an inch down. The other cool thing is when you don't seal our paint, you have a chalky style paint, right? You actually have a chalkboard. So what that allows me to do is take chalk when I'm trying to lay out designs or things like that to be able to keep it as close to perfect as possible. But we know nothing's perfect, but be able to draw on it. So if you ever need to measure anything. So now I'm just going to do the shimmy of my shabby chip brush. Again, let dance all over this stencil that I've used a million and one times, and I love it. It will last me forever as long as I keep it, um, you know, just keep it preserved well. But no, I do not wash my stencils. If you are somebody and you feel like you, you do want to wash your stencils for these hard plastic ones, just use the same Krug cutter that you use to clean your piece with. Um, and use that for your um, your cleaner and just do it right when you're done. But for me, I keep putting it back into my step. Ooh, keep putting it back into my stencil book. So um, that's where I do. I just lay it in there. Let's see here. I managed to move it. That's okay. That's okay. Candice said, I know this is second nature to you, but you're absolutely amazing and inspire me each time I watch you. Thank you. Ah, uh, Candice, thank you so much. Well, it's because of comments like that that I keep doing what I do. And uh, I keep turning the camera on when I take time to paint because that's what I want to do. Inspire somebody else and know that if you're a mom out there and if you're a broke mom, and um, you, but yet you still have a desire to make your home beautiful or you have a desire to make extra money for your family, you can do it through the power of paint. Because if you have the vision, Candace, not everybody does. And so um, you can make some things that's, that are very, very beautiful because there are people in life that will want to not want to paint at all. There are people in life that will want you to paint for them. You know what I mean? That sort of thing. So um, paint some stuff and find some people this summer. Make some extra money, friends. What do you think? I put that on there. You like it? Just for a little something, something. And I ain't going to wash it. Heck no. We're going to lay it over here. It's going to dry. And I'm going to put it right back into my my stencil book right you have three colors in the brown glaze oh it's so much fun so much fun seriously and you can use it to like paint stuff yourself and then the extra seat that you have left over make some signs and do it for like christmas this year or something like that so you see what i did there i just put just put those two little like fleur leaves on the bottom of it and maybe i'll put this need, all needs distressed yet because remember this is darker brownie frowny so what i really need to do what I really need to do is find my electric hand sander. How quickly could I find that? Maybe I'll have to look real fast. All right, because I, I speed sand as well, just to let you guys know. Too funny, right? But it's truth. Um, and so anyway, I'm going to sand it, and I'm also going to put some black on it, okay? So like to bring the black up from down here. But when I sand it, it'll bring some of the areas through. Like, let me just grab a regular sand pad. Let me see here. What do we do with our sand pads? I think they're in the back. But yeah, like how fast is this? How fast was that, guys? How fast was that, Caitlin? I believe it was 15 to 20 minutes. So, okay, awesome. And I talked a lot. 
But I'm gonna go, and this is actually pretty well dry. This is where I started to. But what's gonna be nice is when I take the time to distress it. So I'm gonna go find my electric sander. I could do this all day if I want to, but here's, here's what's really cool. When I put some sand marks into it, it's gonna bring forward more of the darkness, and the darkness is gonna tie in with that black and cream that I have going on down here at the bottom. And, yeah, right. Let me just show you though these doors, how beautiful it can look when you take the time to distress them. And I can do the tops of these when I'm ready. But I like to see a lot of distressing around the door edges. For this piece, I want to do really, really cold. But you start to see what happens when you put the distress marks on there. You start to get that really cool right here. I'll bring you up close in just a little bit. Let's do the other one. I'm gonna find my electric sander. Phew! Don't get me wrong. This gives you the guns, ladies. Phew! What a workout! Yes, exactly. You're absolutely right. Yep. And by the way, just to let you know, since we're talking about Facebook tips and things like that, this week Facebook has been wonky. So if you ever see somebody commenting or trying to watch a video but the sound goes out, Facebook just did an update. So you might need to, I know I just had to update my Facebook, but also if you tell them to tap off the video, open it back up, it kicks right in, but for whatever reason, it's being weird, right? Louise from New Brunswick. Whew, what do you think? Pretty cool, right? I love, 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 love that. So I'm gonna get my sander, really take back more distressing, and uh, if I can find it, maybe I'll come back on and show you how I do that. And then from there, I'll show you this little tip as well, only because, only because I love you. All right. What brick sand paper do you put on the sander? I will use for right now probably between a 65 and an 80 because I want to really rip in, rip into this piece and uh, make it look uber uber distressed, right? So there's where we are right now. But I'm gonna do some more sanding. But just to let you know, when you take your black that matches the black that we put down here, this is another way to do fake edging on your piece, right? So when you distress, especially if you have a piece that doesn't have darkness underneath it, you see what happens when I put that black on there? Watch. It's amazing. I love it. Okay. So I'm just taking another shabby chip brush and I'm putting it kind of on an angle, on an edge and I'm tracing out. Remember, like I always say, even when I was younger, I loved to trace out. Um, I love to trace out things in my coloring book. This is the same thing I'm doing with my black paint. Watch what happens down here. You guys can see down here, right? Actually, it says in the side, it's for Micah brand, okay? So for those of you who are like, can you paint for Micah? That's what I just did. With the chalky style. Christine said, it looks like there's pink bleed through on the edges of the shelf, but I think it is the lighting, which it is the lighting. Yeah. What would you do though if there was bleed through on a piece? Uh, then what I would do is actually use my poly like a band aid. So what I would do is paint that little area and then um, let the bleed through come out. Bleed through for anybody else who doesn't know what that is. That means, let's say for example, if you had, like there's no bleed through on this one today, so it must just be maybe that angle of 
how the lovely Lenny looks today, but um, bleed through happens because paint, I'm sorry, wood is porous and wood holds things over the years like nicotine, you know, cigarette smoke, perfume, oils, all those sorts of things, dirt, and imagine your wood is like a sponge and so sometimes when you put liquid on top of it and, um, and then you go and you uh, go to paint it or you go to seal it, it comes through. It's because you've reactivated all those things that are hidden within that old piece, right? Um, so if that ever happens, and the other reason it can come through is if you're ever using a redwood, like a cherry wood, mahogany, those are big offenders of bleed throughs and it's because they have what's called wood tans which is basically just the dyes that makes that, red, that wood red, it comes through, it just comes through on your paints, right? So if I'm ever painting a piece that might be an old antique, um, if, you know, if you're gonna paint it white, just be aware that white is that color that will show everything if there's any bleed through that happens, okay? So be prepared. But all you have to do is when you see it, then uh, no big deal. What I do is I seal it in and I use my poly like a Band-Aid and then I paint back over that area. So it's nothing to be afraid of. It happens and it's not your fault. It's just the project that you have probably has some history. It's talking back to you. You go to jugmonkeypaint.com. Mine's right above. Yep, link right there. Thank you, Caitlin. You will find the link. And right now we are sending out everything that's come in in the last 24 to 48 hours. And so we are on it, all right? So get your order in so we can watch it. So we can watch for it and get it back out to you. What do you think, guys? Do you see the difference that the black can make to the piece? Makes it much more dramatic, right? If I want to, I can take the black on my brush I can hit those handles up a little bit more if I wanted them to come black as well. Um, but yeah, pretty darn cool. So I'm gonna take my electric hand sander. I love a palm sander. If you um, can get your hands on one, keep it and have it part of your painter's toolkit. And then it's just so much easier to use and to be able to handle, right? But I am loving this. Like I'm so glad that I got this knocked out today. And um, this is all dried, and let's see, this is a little bit tacky over here. It's getting there, it's getting there. But it's gonna be so nice because when I put my paint and all that good stuff, like I just happen to have some chippy hippie juice next to me. So we'll put some on here, but it's gonna be like the perfect piece. And will I, will I go ahead and uh, seal it? Nope, don't need to. I've done it in a distressed fashion. If I get any use, any abuse that it takes, it's only gonna look the part. The chalky style paint is not gonna chip and fall off of it or anything like that, right guys? But if I was not using it for a store display, taking the glass off the front is huge in terms of like making it look better and then putting some greenery on it is another great way. Can you guys see that? Let's see, if I put you way back here. Hopefully you can kind of see it, right? So there we go. It's drying. So nice. I would use chalky style paint because the chalky style paint is the stuff with the muscles and it's made to stick on like really, really good. The milk paint is made to chip and fall away. It's all natural. It's very light. It's fragile. It's unpredictable. You never know what it's going to do. So if you want something that's really going to stick well, definitely I would steer you towards the chalky style paint and we sell these nice fat cans. Nice wide mouth and uh, yeah, so there you go. All right, what do you think? What do you think, what do you think? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, find my electric sander. I'm gonna go at this again really, really quick and uh, I'll show you when it's done, but I am happy. Thank you for hanging out with me today, guys, as I painted it. Hopefully you feel inspired and to know that if you've got company coming over, just grab a brush, go bananas, paint something in your house, make it beautiful and when you get sick of it, all you gotta do is paint it again, right? Teresa, you rock back at you, girl. Thank you all for hanging out with me. I hope you have a terrific day. It looks marvelous, Gayla says. Diana says, love it. I love the hearts. 
Thank you, Laquita. Love that name. Awesome. You are awesome. Thank you, Denise Faza. Love. Mwah. Back at ya. Leslie Girl, our retailer over at Blue Rock, Ohio. Always inspired. Love it. Christy, our new retailer. Oh, mermaid loving retailer. Big announcement about uh, Christy Farlow as well coming up with the work. Rusty Mermaid, she's just getting all set up as well to be one of our retailers. Down by Ocean City by Sal Salisbury. Did I say that right? Like Salisbury Steak, right? You're welcome, Gaylene. All right, take care, my friends. See you, Ms. Marlis. Talk to you guys again soon. Bye.